The man accused of killing 10 people and shooting three others this past weekend has been called a lone wolf who drove from hours away. But some researchers say that description could be misleading. Madison Carter explains why they say that there are still lingering threats of white supremacy here in western New York. We consider a lone wolf attack somebody who uh, commits a crime without uh, kind of the organized support of, of an organization. But from an ideology perspective, this is not um, a single person. This is a person parroting ideology that's shared by um, dozens, if not hundreds, of people in the Western New York area. Michael is part of a group of researchers that have been tracking extremism in and around Western New York for years. We have lots of racists in our, in our community, and many of them uh, do very nasty things to people. But to fall, to reach the level of white supremacist, you're willing, you're, you're willing to take steps um, to change the demographics of your community and using violence. The shooter wasn't from this community, but a growing theory called stochastic terrorism suggests shared thoughts can be just as dangerous as an organized network. It's the idea that once you put out enough uh, ideology, once you put out enough rhetoric, um, it's just a matter of time before someone is going to do something. Investigators point to a 180 page manifesto where the killer praised other mass shooters as proof these ideas planted in the wrong mind grow. Mass shooters all follow a similar pathway to this violence. They start with some type of a grievance, then they start to fantasize violent about violently, uh, you know, exacting means against whatever this um, you know, sort of grievances. We're monitoring the, the local folks as closely as we can um, to, to see how they're reacting and whether their implied um, desires to be violent are, start coming true. Are they starting to make plans? So what do alleged extremists in our area believe? They believe that um, in the city, folks are uh, basically stealing resources. And they, they have always had a fear of people who receive government assistance. They've always had a fear of people that are uh, in the protected classes. And so they leverage that um, because their concept of an ideal society is one that's run by white people who are independently successful. There's no evidence groups here encouraged this act, but they've been responding to it. The most common response has been that this is what they're calling a false flag operation, that um, he was uh, either tricked into doing this or, or, or convinced or entrapped some way by the federal government, um, by the FBI, um, uh, that this is uh, all part of a larger ploy to um, to take away people's guns. Independent researchers continue to monitor social media, flagging any posts that might suggest acting on ideals. This is not the first time Buffalo has been visited by violence. Um, and yeah, I, I would be worried, particularly considering the large number of militias that we have operating in the area. So Madison, what do these researchers suggest law enforcement do to better monitor these threats? The scary thing is there's not a lot they can do. These investigators say that there needs to be more teeth behind what police can do when someone actually does report this concerning rhetoric. But even before you get to reporting it, they're saying the public needs more education about what is concerning, what does need to be reported and where they can do that. So there are a lot of potential options for some next steps here. Madison Carter reporting tonight. Madison, thank you. Appreciate it.